Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Very glad that you are joining us online. Very glad that you are supporting us in the way you are. Beautiful St. Patrick's Church, uh, dedicated in 1914. You cannot build a church like this in today's age, like most of these churches in the country. A lot of people don't want to be here, but I love being here. And I love being with you so that we can celebrate these sacred mysteries together. Let's do so in God's name as we take a moment to call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly king, O God, almighty father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten son. Lord God, lamb of God, son of the father. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to the holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O God, let all the nations praise you. O God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. May your way be known upon earth among all nations, your salvation. O God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on earth you guide. O God, let all the nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us. May all the ends of the earth fear him. O God, let all the nations praise you. A 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejecting is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For just as the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable, just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered to all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came out and called out, Have pity on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, please, Lord, even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Jesus said to her in reply, a woman, great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A little bit of biblical catechesis before we start this homily. So essentially, the church year is divided into three different cycles. Cycle A, cycle B, and cycle C. Cycle A primarily focuses on the Gospel of Matthew. That is the Gospel on which we focus this year. Cycle B focuses on the Gospel of Mark. Cycle C focuses on the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of John is interspersed within all three liturgical years and primarily is used during the season of Easter. Each Gospel has a different theme. So I would tell my university students that if we were talking about a football game or a baseball game, you would have your play-by-play -play announcer and your color commentator who would explain the importance of what's being done. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are as if the play-by-play -play announcer has pretty much taken over the story. The Gospel of John focuses on the color commentator who tells us not necessarily all that Jesus does, but more importantly, who Jesus is and why he, what he does is important. In the Gospel of Mark, uh, I really like the image that the outsiders are looking in and the insiders are looking out. Those who are closest to Jesus do not have a clue on who Jesus is, but the outsiders, whether it's those possessed by demons, those who are Gentiles, those who are Samaritans, they have a very clear understanding of who God is. In the Gospel of Luke, the focus is on the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel of Matthew, this year's texts, focus on what I call a textbook of faith, pretty much Jesus establishing the way we need to live if we believe in God. In these particular readings today, in the 20th Sunday of the year, these readings give me very much a vibe as if we were back in the Gospel of Mark. All three readings, whether it be the outsiders, the foreigners in our first reading, whether it be the Gentiles of our second reading, whether it be this woman, this Canaanite, talking to Jesus in the gospel, all sets of readers, of listeners, of those to whom God is uh, encountering are outsiders, are foreigners, are people 
who are not necessarily part of this so-called faith. You know, like any faith, you can say you are Catholic. A lot of people attribute themselves to being Catholic or Christian, but do they really follow the tenets of the faith? In these three readings, we learn that the foreigners, the outsiders, sometimes have more faith on the outside than those who have it on the inside. The first reading talks about the foreigners having a great sense of faith. St. Paul, in our second reading, talks about how the outsiders, the Gentiles, those who are not circumcised, those who are not uh, associated with Christianity, they have a great faith, and Paul has been working with them because Paul is an outsider as well, killing Christians for a living. Paul was a good Jew, and all of a sudden now he converts to Christianity, and he is not trusted by the Christians, and he is considered a traitor by the Jews. So now he works with the Gentiles who beat him, who flog him, ultimately who execute him, and yet he still ministers to them because as an apostle to the Gentiles, he brings this message to a foreign world. In our gospel reading today, the Canaanite woman exhibited such great faith, more than many within the faith have offered. You know, even on the cross, how many of those apostles stood at the foot of the cross when Jesus died? No one in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and only one in the gospel of John. If we have that same mentality, understanding that that has happened in every single age, including the present age, we realize that prior to 1960, many of our churches in the United States were national churches. When the Diocese of Joliet was established, 1949, 1950, you had your Croatian parishes, your German parishes, your uh, uh, Slovenian parishes, your Irish, your Italian, whatever they may be. Following 1960, the great majority of the immigrants in this country were Hispanic, coming into all kinds of different parishes in the country. And our focus has changed a little bit. This is the growing population. If we accept the foreigners, if we understand that those from the outside have some great faith, a good number of them have wonderful faith. And if we learn from each other, no matter who the person is, we may not agree with people, we may not understand people, but if we learn from people, great things can happen. In my first year at the seminary, we were required to go to all kinds of communities that were foreign to us. In my particular case, a Vietnamese community, a black community, a Hispanic community. I got to learn all kinds of wonderful things from wonderful people. When I go on my pilgrimage uh, with uh, parishioners from the area to Fatima, Lourdes, and Medjugorje, what is that? We're going to a French community. We are going to a Bosnian community. We are going to a Portuguese community to encounter how Mary appeared to these Pacific groups. What we learn from other groups, other cultures, other ways of life, this is what I was taught by those who taught me, those who were my mentors. You know, I was uh, over at St. Anne's, there was a priest named uh, Father uh, John Horton from the Peoria Diocese that came in. He told me that he was influenced. His mentor was a person named Joseph Dion, who served as pastor at St. Anne's from 1937 to 1940. This outsider influenced Father Horton to become a Catholic priest, and just recently, he came over to St. Anne's to celebrate Mass and to connect with one of the parishes that Father Dion served. I love this idea of how people influence other people, how people make a difference, how you have made a difference in my life to hopefully become a better priest. You have taught me. Hopefully, I teach you. Hopefully, we open our hearts to the outsiders who come in so that we can tell them that we love them and that they are welcome. We learn that message from the three readings today, and hopefully that allows our hearts to be a little bit more forgiving, a little bit more open, a little bit more tolerant, and very much accepting of those who are coming in from the outside. That is what our scripture readings are teaching us today. Do we wish to follow them? Do we wish to negate them? That is completely up to us. But let's just make sure we do what's right by God. Let's do what's right for those from the outside coming in. If they show us great faith, we should be accepting them. And even if they don't, we can be learning from them because every person can teach us something. It just matters where our heart is in this journey of faith and where we're willing to accept people and receive people's uh, gifts or whether we wish to shut them out, as was the case so many times in our scriptures 
and in today's age. Thank you very much for teaching me. May I hopefully be able to teach you, allowing God to work through me to share with you so we can build these kingdoms together and share these kingdoms with the people that we meet. This is our prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen committed to welcoming all our wonderful brothers and sisters into this church and encountering and introducing them to God. Let us take a moment to offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. We pray for our missionaries throughout the world, especially the clerics of St. Viator, who have served the southern end of the diocese so well and have offered this love to a wonderful group of people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those who have been oppressed by the gospel message, as the prophets were, as St. Paul was, as certainly our Lord was, that they may have the strength to persevere. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For respect of all life, from uh, inception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. Patrick's, for St. Anne's, for all our wonderful residents of the border town communities, that God may bless them for all they do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they may find God's love in the hands of their caregivers, especially today, we remember all of those on our parish's sick list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be welcomed by God in his heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions offered this last week, one special intention. Uh, very shortly, I'm going to be celebrating a memorial service for a gentleman named Carmen Florio. His sister, Barb Hart, very invested in the Divine Mercy uh, Novena here at St. Patrick's Church. And for all the wonderful ministry that she has offered the people of our parish. For Carmen, for all our beloved deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, continue to hear our prayers and be with us always. Fill us with your love as we journey through life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. For the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever, with humble spirit and contrite heart. May we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me. 
cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and in heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word, you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the spirit. Therefore, now and for all ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory in joyful celebration as we acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you this bread of life, and this chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. By your partaking of this mystery, almighty father, Give us life through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with all your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, 
may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all that sharing in their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them to the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of faith. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Patrick, St. Anne, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of our Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tonis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tonis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. So when this Mass is getting broadcast, we're going to be a couple weeks away from St. Patrick's Parish Picnic on September 24th. We're going to have a bilingual Mass at 10.30 in the morning. We got the Shadow, uh, Saddle Shoe Sisters and the Fender Benders coming to provide music. Somebody has subsidized both groups. 
Emma Elvier has got three different types of caterers coming in with all kinds of food, lots of desserts, lots of games for the kids, all kinds of activities for your consideration. We're going to bless and rededicate the gymnasium as an academy gym and community center. By the time we get to the 24th of September, the shuffleboard court will be done, the bathrooms have been completed, the gym floor has been refinished, we are really trying to upgrade the facilities. The two big projects we have on the docket at St. Patrick's is to eliminate that $150,000 debt was going down by the day and by getting parking lots both in the gymnasium campus and over here in church. Hill Street is not very big. It does not have a lot of room for cars. We want to make the area safe. We have been working with the city, with the county, with the state, trying to get grants to help us with that parking lot. If you can help us out with that, that would be most appreciative. If you know of any pavers, any asphalt specialists, whoever they might be, to help us out with these projects, please contact the parish office. The small things that we do, from the daily prayers, to the book donations, to the brick donations, to the uh, pew donations, to the building donations, whatever they may be, whatever you can do. Prayer is always the most important thing. Giving your time and talent to all these projects we have been doing has been absolutely spectacular. From Cousins Plumbing, to the Aguilar Landscaping Community, to all the folks that have helped us in so many different ways over in the gymnasium and beyond. Please know we're praying for you. We love you. If you need anything from us, please know we are here to serve you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander about the world seeking the ruin of souls. God's blessings to all our liturgy scholars. Once again, this is Father Pete Jankowski from St. Patrick's Church, and I have set up our altar for what is called the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And in this particular session, I want to talk about one specific part of the Liturgy of the Eucharist, namely what we call the Body of Christ, or the Real Presence. In an earlier lesson, I taught you that behind me, in our tabernacle, we notice that the actual body of Christ, body and soul of Christ, is located in that uh, metal box in the back of our sanctuary as signified by a tabernacle lamp. What I wanted to show you today is I wanted to show you this. This is what we call a host. This is what we call unleavened bread. Essentially, it is made of two simple things, water and flour, mixed together, poured into a pan, baked, and then they punch the holes out which form these hosts. At every Catholic Mass that we celebrate, we use something called unleavened bread or hosts, which parallels the story 
from the book of Exodus when Moses and the chosen people needing to escape Egypt quickly out of fear of being pursued by the Pharaoh and his armies baked their bread without leaven. They baked their bread without a rising agent. And so that unleavened bread they carried into the wilderness where for 40 years God fed them manna from the sky and he gave them water to drink so that they would survive. To commemorate this celebration which is called Passover where God passed over the chosen people who were spared any form of death, they celebrate this feast with unleavened bread. Jesus, according to Joachim Jeremias, Jesus celebrated his Last Supper as a Passover meal. Three of the four Gospels specifically talk about what happens with this bread and wine, where in the Gospel of Luke and also paralleled in the first letter to St. Paul to the Corinthians, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat. This is my body which has been given up for you. What we do at a Catholic Mass is we use the same basic elements that were used in the Old Testament times that Jesus used at his Last Supper and we celebrate the exact same liturgy, the exact same Last Supper that Jesus offered some 2,000 years ago. He used unleavened bread, we used unleavened bread. This at this moment is just a host. It is just unleavened bread. And what is inside that tabernacle looks exactly the same as what I am holding in my hand with one significant difference. During the Mass, when the priest actually was ordained a priest, the bishop actually smeared oil on the, the, my hands and he said a prayer and he consecrated these hands these hands now belong to Christ. When the priest places his hands over the bread and wine, it is no longer his hands. These are the hands of Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit that changes the bread and the wine into his own body and blood. So there's a term we use. There are two terms we use that are big highfalutin theological words that I want you to understand. This is called an accident. This is the appearance of a host of unleavened bread. This accident is just simple flour and water baked together. The difference between this and what is in that tabernacle is that the accident remains the same. This looks the same whether it's here or in the tabernacle. The difference is in the substance. This substance is still bread and wine. That substance has been changed into Christ in his entirety. The accident is the same, the substance has changed. We use a big, huge theological term that I want you to understand. It is called transubstantiation. The word trans means to change, to go from one thing to another. So for instance, transcontinental. This is transubstantiation moving from one substance to that substance. This substance is just bread and water that's baked. That substance that has been changed into the body and blood of Christ completely and totally. It may look the same, but the substance is different. So when we come into church and when we see something that looks like this, that has been changed into that. We genuflect, we show respect, we adore the body of Christ. And you'll notice that at a Mass, when we take this changed substance and we put it what's in, called a monstrance, which is looks like a moon with its rays shining out, 
We're essentially saying the body of Christ shines upon us and then we find hope that God has not given up on us, that for 2,000 years and for the thousands of years that continue, we have this gift of God that God is willing to give us through the person of the priest, through the power of the Holy Spirit, as the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. Please understand those two words, accident and substance. Please learn the word transubstantiation. Thank you very much. May God bless all of you.